out of the blue corner. He wears the solid blue trunks and weighed in tonight at 135 pounds. As a professional, he stands undefeated at 31 victories. No defeats with 15 victories by way of knockout. From Houston, Texas, ladies and gentlemen, introducing the reigning WBA lightweight world champion, Juan Baby Bull Diaz. And across the ring, his adversary fights out of the red corner, wearing the yellow, green, and blue. He weighs in, too, at 135 pounds. His professional record stands near perfect at 38 victories, one defeat with 32 victories by way of knockout. From Salvador, Bahia, Brazil, ladies and gentlemen, presenting the four-time world champion and two-time defending WBO lightweight world champion, Asalino Popo Freita. Stay in your corner for a minute. Stay in your corner until everybody gets out. Stay, stay in your corner for a sec. Yeah. Okay. Good gentlemen, we went over the rules. I'm on a good clean fight. Almost. Juntos. Quiero una pelea limpia. Good luck to both of you. Buena suerte a los dos. Talk to you So we are set. 12 rounds. Asalino Freitas, 31 years of age. Had 78 wins as an amateur. His older brother, Luis Claudio, a 1992 Olympian for Brazil at 112 pounds. Juan Diaz turned pro at the age of 16. Had to wait three fights before being able to fight in the United States several days after his 17th birthday. The sixth defense of his belt for Diaz. Michael Ortega has everybody set, and this should be a good one. Round number one. Freitas told us yesterday he wants to come out and test the younger Diaz. Put some pressure on him. Diaz always coming forward, as is his style. Diaz is coming out strong, but you know, he needs to make sure that it's a con controlled aggression. He's coming in with his hands up, which is good. He knows he wants to put pressure on Freitas. Diaz, who was born in Houston, lived in Mexico for a while, has dual citizenship, says, sometimes I lose my patience, and the Mexican in me, the machismo, comes out. I've got to avoid those moments. Got to control his inner Mexican, but right now it's uh, running wild. Juan Diaz is a, an aggressive fighter. This is the biggest fight of his life. And he means business. He's come out, set a very fast pace. We were talking to Freitas yesterday. Right hand cross by Diaz. Freitas needs to stay away from the ropes because that's when he's getting caught. And he's going straight back and he eats a right hand. spoke with him yesterday and we asked about his style. Good counter shot by Freitas and how he's not nearly as aggressive. He says, I'm a little bit older, I'm a little bit wiser working with Oscar Suarez. I want to fight to preserve myself. He said, hey, if Brazil beats Argentina 1-0, it's still a win. That's soccer. Nice combination by Freitas. Freitas is really digging with his shots, unlike we've seen in recent fights. And that's because Juan Diaz is forcing him to fight. The left hand to the body, then a left hand to the head by Freitas. See, this is where he needs to move away from the rope. Freitas can't be caught on the rope, especially when, against a guy that's being aggressive, because to the judges, 
it looks like he's he's putting him against the ropes and he's putting the pressure on him and winning the fight. Alex, it seems that at least they're a good hook to the body again. It seems that Freitas is doing a much better job of placing his punches here in round one. Yeah, he, he, it's easy to, to place your punches when a guy's in front of you all the time, so you can you can know where to put your shots. Diaz said, I cannot let my punches get smothered. They did there, chopping right from Diaz. But again, Freitas busier and more accurate. Good work rate for Asselino Freitas. And round number one. Relax, relax. You're doing fine. It's very important for you. You don't have to resolve everything in one punch. It's a long fight. Relax. Use cross him, right hook. Use your right hand. Your red connect one. All them little small punches he doing, don't let him do that. You gotta go three, four punches and then just walk around it. Step around it. Remember how you do the, the body bag with clean? You make the step, he's right on the rope. So as soon as you make that turn, come up with that uppercut. Okay, I got it, I got it. All right? One, I heard Ronnie Shields in the corner of Diaz, some of the things they worked on with your man moving, how to deal with that. And especially, you know, the, what he says when he gets him on the ropes, throw that combination we've been working on. So Fre Freitas doesn't need to be on the ropes right now. He's a good boxer, got, he's a good athlete, got good legs. That's what he needs to do, keep the fight in the center of the ring. How do you do that when a guy is on rushing as Diaz is? Well, you just think of uh, think of being a matador, and the other guy's a bull. Push him to a side. Push him to to a, to the other side. Keep him. Pu keep pushing him to a side. Nice stiff jab there by Diaz. Stepping in with his jab. Again, that left hook to the body, underneath the elbow. Right hand blocked by Diaz. Good stiff jab by Freitas. After a tremendous first round. Largely because Freitas is pinned on the ropes. He has seemed to make that adjustment and is having a better round as a result. According to CompuBots, Freitas threw 87 punches around. The lightweight average is about 65. In his lackluster win against Zahir Rahim a year ago, he only averaged throwing 45 around. He said he was ready for this fight. Mentally, said it would be an emotional night for me. Diaz throws a good power jab in there. And when you're throwing a good power jab in there, you know, and you're getting through with it, double it up, triple it up. Freitas with a strong fan base, you'd say, how does a guy from Brazil have a strong fan base in Connecticut? But in that greater Boston area, a lot of Brazilian Americans have made the trip to see Popo. Diaz trying to get his left hand working. Another reason that Freitas may be willing to take more chances in this fight is because Diaz lacks punching power. He breaks you down slowly over the course of the fight. And there's no one punch that Freitas has to be overly concerned with at a given moment. Steady dive of those hooks to the body by Freitas. And as Diaz is wants, he just continues to move forward. Freitas blocking a lot of that. Diaz opening up. And, and you can see Diaz definitely listened to his corner. As soon as he got Freitas against the ropes, he worked. That's what you're supposed to do. Because he has nowhere to back up to, nowhere to go. That's where you get all your punches in and score your points. We also saw the veteran Freitas take some of that punishment and let a right go that just missed. Now Freitas goes back to work. We have a octane on the inside. doing wrong he's punching he's staying in the pocket of Freitas so Freitas knows, okay, knows where his head's at at all times the guy's right there for you you understand you may be able to do the one take two holders out 
Look, the guy's right there for you, okay? Now listen, the jab was beautiful for that round, okay? Don't let this guy, you let him get too many punches off, but at the end of the round, he tried to steal the round from you, okay? okay. That's just an old smart veteran trick. You understand? Now listen, when you hear that bell ring, you just start taking off the punches, all right? But look, stop standing right in front of him. Give him this is Diaz with his punches and bunches against the ropes, something he's been working on in, in camp. His trainer told him, as soon as he gets, as soon as Freitas gets against the ropes, work him. Throw that combination that I've been showing you. Freitas tried to rally in those final 30 seconds of the round, possibly steal the round. He didn't only try to rally, he hurt Diaz at the end of the second round. Round number three, scheduled for 12. Freitas comes out with that left hook to the body. So far, Freitas has outclassed Diaz, though Diaz is putting forth a good effort. The question is, can Diaz's youth and energy and body punching, which we have not seen as consistent an effort from him as we're, as we're used to seeing, can those things overcome Freitas' advantages in power and technique and experience? In fact, it's been Freitas who's been the busier to the body. See, Diaz is making a mistake right now. He's just coming in, and he's got his head in one position. He needs to throw some punches and move his head from side to side and not make it so easy for Freitas to hit him. As soon as Freitas, Freitas goes to throw a punch, Diaz covers up, but his head and hands are in one position. Nice combination by Diaz scores to the head of Freitas. got tagged with a left as he tried to move away. There's a body shot from Diaz with the left and right. That's much more typical of Diaz, digging the left hook to the body consistently. Freitas feels that uppercut is working for him. That's why he hasn't stayed away from it. He's throwing that uppercut every time he, he gets against the ropes. He feels that Diaz puts his head down when he comes in, so he's going to be walking into that uppercut. All right, so does it look like Diaz has a little bit more rhythm in this round as far as a plan? Uh, he knows what to do. He wants to get Freitas against the ropes, and then so he can throw his combinations, and that's, and that's a good plan. He doesn't want Freitas right now to outbox him in the middle of the ring. So he wants to get him against the ropes where he can't move so he can do his punishment and throw punches in bunches. He's being met with the fierce resistance that I referred to. He's going to have to overcome it here. He has that is. It's a terrific fight so far. Well, we have seen this from Freitas before. Quick starts, especially in the Corrales fight where he gave up as it wore down. Corrales has that great equalizer power in both hands. Diaz does not. And it's Freitas trying to steal the round, but Diaz listens to Ronnie Shields and responds as well. What a round! is on. Immediately following our telecast, stay tuned for a replay of last week's episode of De La Hoya Mayweather 24-7. The next installment of this series premieres tomorrow night at 10.30 p.m. And you can catch the finale of this four-part uncensored all-access look into the lives and training camps of both fighters Thursday night at 9.30. Only two days before next Saturday's Mega Showdown, live on pay-per-view. And we'll have a live conversation with Oscar De La Hoya and Floyd Mayweather after Freitas and Diaz. Now Juan Diaz did not allow Freitas to steal that last round at the end. Harold Letterman, how do you have it scored through three? Okay, Bob, 29. 28, 
Two rounds to one, Asselino Freitas. But the first two rounds, Asselino Freitas moved. He let out a ropes, but at least he got the hell out of the way when Diaz rushed him. And he lays a tremendous uppercut. The guy's got an uppercut that's a thing of beauty. But then in round three, he stayed in one place on the ropes and Diaz hammered him. Bob, watch the way Asselino Freitas cries to the referee. He did it in round three already, complaining about headbutts. He does it in every fight. In every fight, I guarantee he's going to do it again. Two to one. Asselino Freitas. All right, we'll keep our eye on that as Diaz continues to press forward. All right, Lennox, you're in the ring against a guy that just wants to bull rush you. What does Freitas need to do to stop that? Well, he's doing the right thing. Side to side movement, showing him different angles and meeting him with that uppercut. Because when a guy's bending down and coming into you quite aggressively, meet him with those uppercuts because he's going to walk right into it. The body shot by Diaz moved Freitas off the ropes. Freitas seems quite happy to be on the ropes. It kind of reminds me of the uh, Brazilian rope -a What's so excellent about this fight so far is it's difficult to say what the story is. Is this Freitas picking apart Diaz as Diaz rushes forward and Freitas counters with power shots? Or is this Freitas being worn down by a young, aggressive guy? The, the, the course of this fight is unclear, but it's action all the way. My guess is once we get to around seven or eight, we'll get an idea of where Freitas stands. See, Diaz is just working right there. You know, it, it looks like a definitely he's been working in the gym on the heavy bag, and that's what you need to do. Think of the sky as a heavy bag. Remember all the combinations that you threw, and just do the same thing in the ring. And Freitas seems content to stay in front of Diaz. Once again, Juan Diaz will just move forward. Body shot by Freitas, right on the belt line. Michael Ortega says keep it up. Freitas should use that jab a little more to, to help keep Diaz off of him. At the same pace as we had in the first three rounds. Right hand backing away by Freitas. This is where he's trying to steal the round. But Diaz is not letting him steal this round. Diaz heeding the advice of Ronnie Shields, his trainer. Oh, there's nothing wrong with your jab, baby. Look, anytime you want to hit this guy, you can hit him with the jab. All right? I got to have the jab going. I got to stay busy. I want you to stay busy this round with the jab, all right? Now, look, when you do get in close, if you throw a hook at it from the outside, we can't do that. We got to stay close to him. You, you already know the guy. Now I want short punches. Work inside. Bring the fight inside. Trading against the ropes, Lennox. Not a lot of clean shots. That was at the end of the round. No, it looked more like a rally just trying to realize that he had five seconds left, so he just wanted to get in five or six punches. He didn't want Freitas to take the play away at the end of the round. <laughs> round number five, scheduled for six. Twelve round showdown between Asselino Freitas and Juan Diaz. You know, Freitas has hurt Diaz in this fight, end of the second round. And Diaz presents Freitas with plenty of counter-punching opportunities. But Freitas at lightweight has not been the puncher that he was at junior lightweight, fighting smaller guys. And Juan Diaz is a big lightweight. corner, Freitas is camp saying, let's shorten up the punches a little bit, Lennox. What do they mean by that? Well, they're saying he's punching a bit too wide. Right now, he needs to shorten it up. And... Oh, here's, here's a good punch. Oh. 
Diaz stepped in with a combination and hurt Fredos is hurt. He's trying to hold on for dear life. Diaz stepped in with a combination and Freitas is hurt. The baby bull trying to finish off Popo. Diaz walked through some big shots from Freitas to land that shot that hurt Freitas. Another combination by Diaz. Right hand to the chin. Good uppercut by Diaz. The last time Freitas was in big trouble like this, he quit. And let me tell you, Freitas is, is breathing hard. And he was stung by the criticism and the weight of his quitting against Perales. And here he has a chance to redeem himself. He has not quit yet. In this venue, at Foxwoods. This is a situation where Diaz needs to go back to the body and throw that combination, do that, do that gym work that his trainer was telling him to do. As soon as he gets against the ropes like this, throw that combination that he's been throwing against the back. Diaz with another combination. Approaching a half, half minute to go here in the fifth. Not a lot of zip on those Freitas punches now. Not even, at all. Even earlier when he was really unloading, Diaz was walking through them. As Diaz let an opportunity slip by. This round number five for Juan Diaz. As he hurt Ocelino Freitas. Breathe, breathe. Deeply. How, how are you feeling? Okay. Listen to me. He gave everything he had. He gave everything he had. This guy is not intelligent. You have to be intelligent. Work the body first. Combination from Freitas, and then Diaz went to work on Freitas. Diaz responding with huge power shots. That hurt Freitas. Here comes Diaz. Control aggression. You see, when you're in, in this kind of position, you got to take your time and pick your punches when the guy's hurt. That just shows the youth in him. Paul Diaz, a singles hitter, and he hit some doubles in that round. <laughs> 15 knockouts on his resume in the 31 wins. We talked about his lack of pure power, but. In volume, it wears an opponent down. Lennox says, Ronnie Shields told Diaz early in the fight, use the jab more. He's used the jab more, and it's paid dividends for him. It has. He's doing it in a good way because it's a power jab. It's a stopping jab. It's a driving jab. Drives Fritas right back to the ropes, and that's where he can administers his combination punches. And Freitas tries that hook to the body. Diaz knows he wants Freitas against the ropes because he's had great results from that. And he whips a couple of combinations that snap back the head of Freitas. Freitas showing a bit that he's a bit tired. Any anytime you see a boxer grabs his trunks and pulls them down, he's always trying to get as much air into his body as possible. It just looks like Freitas is running out of gas here, right? Yeah, he def definitely looks a bit tired, a bit winded. He's allowing Diaz to come in and get and catch him with these jabs. If you're the opponent of a guy that looks tired, though, do you have to be cautious in your attack? Well, at this time, you do have to be cautious, but still, realizing he's tired, make him even more tired, punch him in the, in the stomach even more, make him think about 
that stomach punches and he doesn't want to get hit. Yes, throws a good right hand too because it's worked for him and paid dividends for him as well. Freitas swore that he was really ready to fight. And Diaz is a guy who will find out about you. And so far, Freitas has shown that he is willing to fight over the first half of the fight. But with a pressure fighter and volume puncher like Diaz, kind of breaks your spirit over the course of the fight. How much fight will Freitas have left in the second half? You know that Diaz is one that does not back down. Well. 24-7 has been an outstanding program chronicling the big fight next week between Austin De La Hoya and Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather has talked about his influence in becoming a great champion on 24-7. My dad uh, was real, real hard on me, real hard on me. Uh, I couldn't make no mistakes. You know, if I make a mistake, you know, my dad, you know, kind of, you know, cussed me out, slapped me, checked me, chastised me, put me in my place. No pain, no gain. See, that's something that I installed in him. Whether he said or not, it's something that I installed in him. You can catch a replay of last week's episode of De La Hoya Mayweather 24-7 tonight. Following our telecast, the next episode premieres tomorrow night at 10.30 and the finale on Thursday night at 9.30. Later tonight, both Oscar De La Hoya and Floyd Mayweather will join us from their respective camps to talk about 24-7 and next Saturday night's mega showdown. Those malaprops from Floyd Sr. are great because they make sense. No pain, no game. I guess that could work. And something he installed in him. I guess that works too. Install or instill. Let's get a look at Harold Letterman's scorecard. Okay, Bob. I got it 57 57. Three rounds apiece, all even. But I got to tell you, rounds five and six went to Juan Diaz. So that just has to show where the momentum in this fight is. Uh, Asselino Freitas got off to a good start, won the first two rounds. Diaz came back, won the third. Diaz took the fourth off, and Freitas took that. But in five and six, Juan Diaz is like, like a bull. I mean, he's like a machine. And Asselino Freitas running, looked like he's trying to survive in there. And Diaz taking him apart methodically, little by little. Three to three, but Diaz with the momentum. And a good left hand here at the start of round seven. And another left hand. That left hook from Diaz is money when Freitas is against the ropes. He finishes his combinations with it, and it's having great effect. Well, one reason it's effective, because he has no place to go. I'm talking Freitas, either to the right or to the left. And if he goes to the right, he's going to run into a left hook. We saw earlier in the fight, in that sequence, when Freitas was against the ropes, he was able to place good shots countering back. Not a lot of zip coming back now. <laughs> Lennox, is it time for Diaz to step the pace up now even more? It's definitely time for him to step the pace up. He, he's doing a good job right now. The question is, can he step up? You know, he's exerted a lot of a lot of energy in these last past few rounds. Yeah, I don't know if he goes to 11, Bob. He's kind of at 10. Reminds me of Jeff Fennick with that kind of relentless combination. Misses with that roundhouse right. Counter shot by Freitas. Diaz has been down a couple of times in his career. And he responds with a left hand, trying to jump on Freitas. What made him respond, he got hit with a great uppercut. And that just made, woke him up and said, no, he's not taking that. He's coming right back. Freitas countering Diaz, kind of like Azuma Nelson tried to counter Jeff Fennick in their pair of great fights. Right hand from Diaz. Just missed with the right there. Nice combination to the body. Freitas trying to steal the end of the round. Give it deep breath, 
Much better, much better. Now, now we're connecting, now we're connecting. Don't stop, don't stop, don't even think about it. I want to continue. Stay on him, stay on him. Work downstairs, go upstairs. Work the body. That was a good comeback round for you. He did all the work. That's right, you didn't do anything. You can't let this guy get, remember I told you, you catch one or two punches, you gotta fire right back, okay? And here we see Freitas against the ropes and comes up with a beautiful left uppercut. Now this really woke up Diaz. He didn't like this punch, so he came back. And here he comes with some relentless combination punching, trying to get back from that uppercut. <laughs> According to the copy box numbers, Diaz has outlanded Freitas 92 to 43 over the last three rounds. Freitas got off to a quick start. Was hurt in the fifth round. Needs to be a little more life in Freitas' legs as we start the eighth. There's no give in Juan Diaz. Freitas is going to have to break him physically. Well, we have seen given the past from Freitas, and that's the sense I'm getting the way this fight is going. In, the, in order to stop Diaz, slow him down, you need to hit him, and, uh, and especially use the power. So I, I didn't see too much power from Freitas yet. Only power I see is in the uppercut. A good stiff jab again by Diaz. Slowed down the movement of Freitas. Can break Diaz's will. You have to separate him from his will with a knockout kind of a punch. Nice. We talked in the open about this is the best fighter on Freitas on Diaz's resume. What's your assessment so far from the Baby Bull? Well, he, he's definitely doing well, and uh, you know you could say this was a good step up for him, a good uh, test, and uh, you know he just needs more of these type of fights, and he's doing well. He's a junior at the University of Houston downtown. Political science major wants to go to law school. He's trying to pass his boxing bar. He's definitely in, imposing his will on, on Freitas in this fight. And this is what you have to do. Pressure, pressure, break the fight. Give your opponent something he doesn't like. Pressure. Make him deal with it. He has to work harder to deal with you pushing that pressure against him and him trying to stay off the ropes. Diaz did a good move right there. He threw a couple punches, then he took a step to the side, gave, gave him a different angle, and threw a different punch again. Left hand to the chin, scored by Diaz. Freitas, flat-footed now. Freitas is sighing almost on the ropes. Getting very discouraged. And he gets oh. rocked back. Freitas almost looks other. He looks tired. He almost looks like he's going to give up. How pressure fighters like Diaz and Jeff Fennick before him and Jake Lamata before him, those kind of pressure fighters that aren't big oh, punters left hand fights. Hurt Freitas as he rocked back into the ropes. They, they break the other guy's will to, to fight on, and it looks like that's what Juan Diaz is doing here. Right hand to the ear by Diaz. Another emphatic round for the 23-year-old from Houston. Looks like he's in great shape. Doesn't even, he doesn't even look winded and he's not breathing hard. Deep. Breathe in. How you feel? How you feel? Answer. The, the fight is not over. The fight is not over. Listen to me. You do your work. Don't worry about that. Fight, the fight starts now. The, the fight, the fight's not ending now. Who does this guy? You understand? Oh. They stop the fight. They stop the fight. Freitas is quit in the corner on his stool. He doesn't believe he can go on. He's That's it. it. Freitas has been there before, and once he went to that place, it became easier for him to go back to it. 
And like I said, it looked like he wanted to quit, or he's either getting tired, he, he felt his legs, he felt his body wasn't there for him, and, you know, he told his corner, that's it, I can't go out there. You know, his corner was trying to tell him, the fight is not over, the fight is not over, but he had a look of resignation similar to the look against Corrales of, but I don't want to fight anymore. The difference with these two fighters we just saw is you have to physically break Diaz. It doesn't like, look like he's going to crack emotionally. And uh, Freitas, having cracked before, found it easier to crack again. So Juan Diaz with a defining win, 32-0, gets his 16th stoppage. Marcelino Freitas did not answer the bell to start the ninth round. And after a quick start by Freitas, it was the power and the volume of punches from Juan Diaz as Freitas is embraced by his wife, Eliana. They have an 18-month-old son, Marcelino Popo. They were married on national television in Brazil. And a great champion. How about his lawyer? Uh, he's stopping uh, Fox Woods uh, again. Uh, How about Juan Diaz? Uh, living at home with mom and dad. Here's Willie Savannah. Savannah had a gym when this roly poly eight year old came in. He said, I was closing my gym. I was done. I was moving on to other things in my life. This quit would be gone in two to three weeks and we'll close the gym. And he said, All these years later, 15 years later, I'm still with Juan Diaz. Willie Savannah and the Diaz parents. You see Juan's mom, Olivia. Tears of joy for their son, Juan. Both Olivia and Fidencio and Willie Savannah make joint decisions concerning Juan's future. And they come up with a decision tonight of greatness. Time for the official time of the stoppage. Here's Mike Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, in your main event of the evening, after eight rounds of action, the red corner retires. Therefore, the winner by TKO victory, the two-time world champion, and now the unified WBO and WBA lightweight world champion, Juan Baby Bull Diaz. Lennox, he made a statement tonight, didn't he? He definitely did make a statement and looked good doing it. He went in there, applied the pressure, listened to his corner, and that's great, the fact that he can listen to his corner and, you know, his corner can tell him what to do and he can go out there and actually apply it. Uh, gave him good pressure, throwed good punches. We, we wouldn't expect him to knock, knock a person out with one punch, but he definitely threw some great punches and bunches. Let's take a look at the final punch numbers for Juan Diaz and Asselino Freitas. And you take a look at the final punch stat numbers and you see the fact that Freitas was busier, but a majority of that came early in the fight, in the first three rounds. It was Diaz who just got busier and busier and more powerful as the fight went on, connecting at 38%. Power punches are always part of Diaz's game plan. And he was busier a bit more accurate. He hurt Freitas in the fifth round, pounded him. Freitas would not answer the bell for the start of the ninth round. Juan Diaz remains perfect. He's with Max. Juan Diaz, congratulations on just a tremendous performance. How did you stop Asselino Freitas? Well, Max, I mean, it was one of them things where, you know, I kept putting pressure and pressure, and I felt them slowing down a little bit. I heard him, I think it was a sixth or seventh round. And, you know, I, I went a little crazy, you know, I'm, I'm still a maturing champion, 23 years old. I got a lot to learn, but uh, he's a tough guy. I got to give him credit, a, a true champion, a true warrior. Did you ever feel his power? Did he ever hurt you? Uh, no, nah, he, he didn't hurt me uh, at one point, not, not at all. You not know? in the second round, at the end of the second round? No, you, you felt that, uh, I mean, you saw it. You know, he hit me with some clean punches, and maybe I stepped back a little bit, but I jumped right back on him. You know, if I was hurt, I definitely wouldn't have done that, but I jumped right, right back on him. And, you know, maybe it was a good punch, but, you know, I didn't feel it. Maybe it stopped me in my, in my tracks, but it didn't hurt me. I know it's tough now. You're very emotional. You're very happy. 
Who do you want next? Oh, man, I, I'm going after the other champions in the lightweight division. It don't matter who it is, you know? Bring me a champion and I'll fight them. Okay, well, along those lines, uh, David Diaz and Eric Morales fight for one of the meaningless uh, uh, belts, but Joel Casamayor is the lightweight champion of the world. Do you have any plans to fight Joel Casamayor? Man, Max, you know, got to deal there with my manager, with Don King, but bring him on. Bring Casamayor on. If he wants to fight, let's right, fight, you know? Will you feel that you are the lightweight champ, even if you have all of the belts, if you don't fight Casamayor? Well, you know, in the people's eyes, once you have all the belts, you're a true champion. And, you know, that's all that counts. The, uh, I can't do nothing else. There's no more titles to win. If you win all four belts, what is there to move, you know? What is there to do? Beat the champ, Casamayor. But, however, people are going to want to see you fight no matter who it is because you seem to bring out the fighter and the other guy because you don't stop coming. Other than the winner of Diaz Morales or Casamayor, are you looking at any of the junior lightweights, for instance, Manny Pacquiao, who may have a promotional problem, getting a big fight at 130? You know, Max, that would be a great fight. Actually, I think that that would be the fight of my dreams. You know, if, if Manny Pacquiao was, was to uh, want to fight me, then we would go ahead and do it. You know, that, uh, to me, that would be the, the fight of my dreams because, as you know, they call him the Mexican assassin. You know, and, and I'm a Mexican-American, but at heart, I'm a true Mexican. And you fight like a true Mexican. And you, although you didn't really control your inner Mexican, you went at him. Thank you from all boxing fans for a great night, Juan Diaz. We hope to see you soon. Bob.